Previously, we explored the fascinating mystery of star forts, which might be evidence of a forgotten civilization. These geometric marvels, resembling stars, are found worldwide, similar to pyramids. Yet, star forts aren't commonly taught in schools or featured in mainstream history channels. Despite being labeled as military fortresses built in the 1600s by Italians and the French, their global presence suggests something more. The discussion also touches on a flag resembling a star fort, representing the CSDO, a military alliance involving Russia and others. The official narrative calls them a bastion fort. Anyway, this is part two of the series. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video. The link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. This is how the Wikipedia page on Bastion Fort starts. A Bastion Fort, or Trace Italien, a phrase derived from non-standard French, literally meaning Italian outline, is a fortification in a style that evolved during the early modern period of gunpowder, when the cannon came to dominate the battlefield. It was first seen in the mid-15th century in Italy. Some types, especially when combined with ravelins and other outworks, resembled the related star fort of the same era. The design of the fort is normally a polygon with bastions at the corners of the walls. These outcroppings eliminated protective blind spots, called dead zones, and allowed fire along the curtain from positions protected from direct fire. Many bastion forts also feature cavaliers, which are raised secondary structures based entirely inside the primary structure. It's interesting they mention cannons. The star fort I visited in St. Augustine added brand new cannons to the structure to support this same narrative. I shot a video there and have taken the following pictures from my video. These are the sparkling new cannon additions. It's not clear in the image, but when you are there, you see the cannons are new. They feel out of place. There was not a single cannon that looked old, nor any evidence that traditional cannons were used. They may have been, it's possible. But it's dishonest to add newly made fake cannons to support a preconceived narrative. I doubt they even work properly, they look like film props to me. This is a close-up view of the Star Fort at St. Augustine, Florida. Inside the structure, I found more film props to make it look like Spanish soldiers built and used this fort. I do wonder why these Spanish fighters had such a keen interest in sacred geometry. And I wonder again, where they got the resources, time, labor and money to build this. Do you know why? Because the other structures in St. Augustine that they are said to have built are not impressive at all. This is the bold schoolhouse of St. Augustine, the second tourist attraction after the Star Fort. There are a lot of houses like this in St. Augustine. The Spanish settlers built simple wooden houses. And then, suddenly, out of nowhere, they built this gigantic star fort? Acting stupid, I asked the tour guide whether the clothing pieces and beds of the Spanish soldiers are the originals from back then. Oh no, of course not. These are reenactments, she said. Reenactments. Props. In other words, fake items to support a false history narrative. This isn't a history lesson, it's outright deception. If a thing is true, do I really have to add made up items to support a theory? They make a big show of reenactment. But even the most basic questions remain unanswered. I went around asking why there are metal plates inside the corner towers. Nobody I asked appeared to know. Not the warden, not a nearby tourist officer, not the lady in the ticket booth. Thousands of tourists visit this place every day, and still nobody knows the purpose of these plates in the floor. I can accept a mundane explanation. Maybe they are metal rods to stabilize the old fragile structure. But it's difficult for me to accept that there are people representing the place that have no idea what any of it means and cannot answer questions outside of their indoctrinated data. There were a couple of half circles where it looked like there had been structures on top of them previously. But I didn't find out what they were because the people overseeing the place didn't know. This is a peek out of one of the towers. Even at its highest point, the tower is packed with seashells. This can only mean that it was either built using seashells or that it was, at one point, underwater for a long time. The St. Augustine Star Fort is called Castillo de San Marcos. It's said to be the oldest masonry fort in the continental United States in 1672 when Florida was part of the Spanish Empire. This particular fort was built right at the Atlantic Ocean. 
For the record, I am not saying that this fort wasn't used by the Spanish army. I am questioning whether it was built by them. I suspect they already found the fort there and repurposed it, claiming it as their own. I say this so easily because only one hour south of St. Augustine we find a town called New Smyrna. And there we find the mysterious pyramid of unknown origin that I presented in the previous video. The pyramid appears to use the same rock and have the exactly same age look as the St. Augustine Fort. And it's also packed with seashells. Even the bricks are laid in the same way as the strange pyramid nearby. I was lucky enough to see both structures for direct comparison. To me, there is little doubt that the same people built both. But that doesn't fit official history because the Spanish were not known for building pyramids, they were known for destroying them. It may have been they who destroyed the Step Pyramid at New Smyrna. The Star Ford had a few shafts that I could only get images of by holding my GoPro camera inside small openings. Without small cameras, these shafts can't be seen. Here's one of them. I don't have an opinion on what they are. But what are Star Forts? Wikipedia says they are military installations. That is possibly one use, but many researchers have found evidence for other uses. One example. I borrowed this image from the German Federal Library. It is said to be from 1640 and is titled A Drawing of the Sixth Royal Pleasure Garden. From the same source, I find another royal pleasure garden in German Lustgarten that is shaped as a star fort. An alternate name provided on the page is Geometric Garden. This one is said to have been made in 1620. The label Geometric Garden captured my interest. If that's what our ancestors called them, it means they were built with the purpose of being geometric. I am not ruling out military use or repurposing. I am also not ruling out that these gardens are repurposing even older structures. But, if the purpose of these geometric shapes is only for tactical defense, you wouldn't need them for pleasure gardens. There must be more to them. And, when was the last time any major architect built a structure in the shape of a star? My intuitive sense is something about sacred geometry and the flow of energy, either spiritual energy or electric, sonic or electromagnetic. The shapes are harmonious, unlike the block architecture and infrastructure we have today. Maybe they were built on already existing energy points around Earth? I can only speculate. This is Fort Mont Alban near Nice, France. What follows is an antique map of the area and Star Fort. Unfortunately, I no longer know the source of this image and couldn't find it while searching. Like so many things in this line of research, it has been scrubbed off the internet, or at least been made hard to find. I show it to you anyway, because it's anomalous. A close-up. I can't explain the red lines emanating from the star fort to the other structure. There are also two red lines emanating from the back of the star fort. Are they energy rays? Lasers? Underground tunnels? or pipelines, wires, or something else. You'd think it would be easy to find out what they mean in this age of information where we supposedly have access to all records. I spent an hour looking for the image or an explanation for the red lines and came up empty. I did find an antique postcard of Fort Montalban from 1792. If accurate, it reveals that the greater area around Mont Alban was cut in a star fort shape and the structure in the valley was also a star fort. This video is not comprehensive, it's a brief introduction. There are already thousands of citizen researchers looking into this who provide a more thorough look at star forts. I do recommend you take everything you see and read online with a grain of salt, including my videos. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide.